when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, Come on, you never stop working.
I stand before you now, the greatness of your now. I've heard of the majesty and wonder of you, King of Heaven.
If you're lonely, longing for someone to hear you If your burdens feel like more than you can bear If you're searching for a place to just be honest Come just as you are If you're tired of just hoping for an answer If you're wishing you could let your God come down If you feel like you can hold it all together Come just as you are There's no need for any hiding At the Father's house you met with open arms And He gives grace without condition As you are Nothing else just comes There is space for everyone who feels unworthy A place for those who never felt at home Where you don't have to wonder if you're wanted Just as you are There's a hope for you and me His name is Jesus He's the one who makes the broken whole again Now there's no need for you to pick up all the pieces Hey, come just as
just as you Mark Gagan here, lead pastor of New Day Church. It's great to be with you. It's time for tithes and offerings and giving. Have you ever tried to be normal? I I'm sitting in a room full of people that have just tried to be normal and they're not quite reaching it. Can I show you how to be normal in terms of Christianity, in terms of giving? Give your tithe and give to missions. Give to the poor. That's normal. That's not extraordinary. That's normal. Your tithe is your first 10%. Your offerings, your gifts to missions, or your gifts to poor are above that first 10%. And when you do that, the Lord says he's going to open the windows of heaven and pour out the blessing, and it just keeps coming. I, I tell you, uh, our life uh, is a product of just simple giving. And uh, it's normal. It's normal to give. Freely you've received, freely give. It's normal. You sow, you reap, it's normal. And so, hey, be a normal Christian and give. Your tithes, your offerings, missions to the poor. God bless you. This is a new day. Well, welcome a new day. It is so awesome to be here with you today and get to share what God has put on my heart. And boy, it's going to be good. So I'm going to dive right in. I want to tell you that one of the most important lessons in life is this. How to love like Jesus. Learning to love like God loves you. The whole reason God put us on this planet, it wasn't to make money. It wasn't just to play wasn't to grow old and have this awesome retirement, although we would like to, right? Well, actually, God put us in this world to love. He put us here specifically on this planet to love. I will tell you, you will miss out. I promise you, you will miss out if you can't love. You will miss out on the most important piece of life. Listen, we need to love ourselves and love our neighbors. Let me say this. If you could ask God one question, just one question, what would that question be that you would ask God? Well, you get one shot at it. What's it going to be? Well, someone did ask that question in the Bible. This was a man, a teacher of the law. He asked Jesus, what is the most important thing in life? See, Mark, he asked that question. He wanted to know what is the most important thing in life? Well, guess what? Jesus responded, that's a great question. Just like this in Mark 12, it says, love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Oh, wow. Love my neighbor as myself? Well, I don't even like my neighbor. Like, what if you don't like your neighbor? What if he puts his trash in your yard or he doesn't, he, his leaves from his, his tree always blow down and they go into your yard and you're like, oh my goodness, seriously, I'm supposed to love him? No, no, I, he's my enemy because his, his leaves go in my yard. And his garbage and his dog. His dog always comes over and does things in my yard. I hate it. You know what? It still says, love your neighbor as yourself. Now, that's a, that's a tough one, right? Because if you struggle in loving yourself, you're going to struggle to love your neighbor. 
and you're probably going to love your neighbor like you love yourself. So there's a lot of work that has to be done here. But there are no command commandments more important than these. Love me and love others. The biggest, of course, always goes back to loving yourself. See, God thinks you're amazing. He thinks you are actually the most special. In John 13, Jesus adds to it. Now, I am giving you a new commandment. Okay, this is the new commandment. Oh, again, love each other just as I have loved you. See, it's repeating itself. Isn't that amazing? Because I find in the Bible that God repeats himself many times in many different ways because he knows that we probably won't get it the first time because we're human and he knows that we need to be told again. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. See, the way we behave and the way we love others is showing the Lord love and showing that we love through him. So today's message, this is it right here. Walking in his, in his love establishes one's heart to be empowered and have motivation as a believer to live as Christ did. So what motivates you to live like Christ did? Do you want to live like Jesus? Do you want to love like Jesus? It's pretty good stuff, I'm going to say. Well, I can tell you that I can stand here right now that I live it. I speak the truth. I live this every day because I practice every day trying really, really hard to love like Jesus. You know, and it is hard. I can promise you that I'm not perfect. But I do know that when I reach out to somebody, it's with a genuine smile when I smile at somebody. So you say to yourself, what does walking in love look like? What does it look like to a believer? And what does it look like to a non-believer? It's a good question. Well, as a believer, God tells us to love our enemies. That's a tough one. I can tell you. That is really, really hard. But it says, I'll tell you right now in Matthew 5, love your enemies, pray for those who persecute you. Oh man, I got to pray for them too? Oh, this is tough, right? We have to stop what we're doing and, and ask God to help them when we're the ones that are getting hurt. Whew, that's a tough one, right? Are you holding on to something that's made you really mad, somebody that's made you really, really mad, and you're just, you're harboring that, and you're not going to let it go, you're holding on to it, and you packaged it away, well, sorry, but uh, if you turn to Jesus, he will give you the motivation through the Holy Spirit to have the discernment and the ability to understand and loving your enemies or those who've wronged you. See, he's going to give you the discernment on how to love them because we're not going to be able to love them in human nature because our human nature isn't going to love them. But the Holy Spirit through us can love anybody, whether they've been wrong to us or they've been awesome to us. Or even if we don't even know them, if, if it's a complete stranger, this is living Christ-like lives. Okay, let's stop for a second. Let's talk about how often we get annoyed and frustrated with all these COVID rules. Okay, so it's, it's a hot topic. Why don't we go there, right? People are really annoyed. They get annoyed with each other. They get annoyed with the fact that they got to show vaccine proof. They get annoyed because somebody's talking about being sick or they're sick and I can't do this because I'm sick and blah, 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 blah. It goes on forever, right? Well, see, this is the time that we need to do a self-check on ourselves because walking through his love sets us free from letting that stuff affect how we respond to others. See, we as believers, we have his help. We have his help to clear the battles that are going on around us. So if, if there's battles of COVID going around us, as believers, 
we can rise above that. We don't have to be like annoyed by it. We can love through it, right? We can find a way to love through it and to provide through it. Find other opportunities, do other things. Then after that, we can respond and act out of love because that's how it works. See, we don't want to miss out on the ability to love those who are broken. Because then we're going to miss the opportunity, the prized opportunity to help somebody that might be hurting. Trust me, I can promise you none of us are perfect. We all are going to stumble and we're all going to cause heartache to ourselves and to others because that's what happens in life. Okay. That's living. That's, that's how we, we, we don't try to, but it does. But the cool part about it is if we love like Jesus, then we can overcome those much, much easier. See, we are called by the Lord to love the broken ones who we want to actually shove aside. The ones that make our life really very, very difficult. We don't want those people knocking at our door, right? We don't, we don't want that. We don't want the hurt that they bring. We want them to go away. See, the key to defeat the hate and the fear is to love louder. So the more harder it gets, the more love that we give them. You pounce them with love regardless of how they respond, regardless of how they act. See, that uh, seven years ago, somebody started loving me. They loved me through all of my imperfections. Okay, I can promise you, if you, if you wanna call up somebody that's a pain in the rear, well, that'd be me, okay? I fell in that category of causing issues always, just not accepting anything. You know, everything was a problem. And, and I was scared and I was fearful and, and, and these people invested a little bit of time. Okay. They, they kept giving me the opportunity to, to, to be who I was and they kept loving me and loving me, even though I was trouble, they kept loving me and loving me and loving me. And the love just kept overflowing and overflowing and overflowing. And, and the love was so contagious that I ran to it. See, people are lonely and they're depressed, and they're isolated, and they want love. People want attention. Anybody that gets attention and gets a godly attention is going to drive and strive for it. See, Jesus always had time for everybody. It didn't matter who you were, what you were. It, it, Jesus didn't care. You could have been broken as broken could be broken, or you could be as awesome as awesome could be. See, he's loving us regardless. It's that loving unconditionally through all of our rights and wrongs. The unconditional love. That love is one that once you learn, you will want to share with everyone. You will want to share God's unconditional love. One that you know will never disappear. See, the thing about people and humans is they're going to let you down, that it's going to happen. And there could come a chance in time that, that my perfect world could be let down. But I can promise you this, God will not. He is unshakable, okay? He doesn't change. He doesn't change today, tomorrow, the next day. He loves you unconditionally every day, regardless of what you are, how you act, how you behave. Even if you ignore him, he is still going to love you. Granted, he doesn't want that. He wants you to, to reach for him in all circumstances, but he will love you no matter what. There's no boundaries. God doesn't have boundaries. Humans, in the human nature, we have boundaries. We set them all the time. We, we always line up everything perfectly, right? I'm going to have this friend and that friend, and I'm only going to talk to that person and this person. And yeah, well, God, he, he's open to everyone. And his love through us, he wants us to be open to everyone too. He doesn't want us to pick. He wants you to open your heart to the Holy Spirit and have them, him drop people in your life. Basically, those who fall short, 
He wants us to join together in a mission of hope. See, this is a mission of hope. Us Christians together can give hope to one who is completely broken. I can tell you right now that Ted Gerges has a mission, okay? He takes his mission to QFC. Yeah, this sounds really weird and really funny that somebody goes to a grocery store and he missions to people. But you know, he shows God's love every time he walks in that door, okay? He walks into to QFC and maybe he doesn't have a smile that day, but guess what? The minute he walks in the door, he puts his smile on. And he says, okay, today's Jesus day because when I go into there, it's a time to mission to people. His missioning hope and happiness, okay? So one person that he talked to is now part of our church, okay? He comes to Wednesday night prayers, okay? This is what it's about. See, he reached out to that person and he just gave a little bit of love, a little bit of attention, okay? And that attention went this far and now I have this great person in our church, okay? So this is how it works, right? And then you've got somebody that's hurting and he just takes a simple second to ask a simple question about why he doesn't have a smile. Why doesn't somebody have a smile? Why don't you have a smile today? What's wrong? He's just, he has discernment. He has an open heart to what the Holy Spirit is telling him to ask somebody. And that is loving like Jesus. See, Ted's putting himself second. His grocery store visit might become two hours rather than 15 minutes. But when God tells you to show up, it's time, folks. It's time to show up. And it's time for us to live outside of our circles. See, taking real action is the motivation. You can talk about it all you want. You can share this message later. That's great. That's sharing the message, but it's not taking action. We need to do more than just share what we've heard. We need to act on what we hear. So when I speak, Pastor Mark speaks, Cindy speaks, Tom speaks, uh, Michelle speaks, anybody speaks. When they speak, we need to do more than just listen. We need to take action on that, what we hear. Self-control, having enough compassion, to find enough solidarity and humility to realize the power of weakness. See, we have to humble ourselves and know that we could be the life changing for somebody else out there. Here's a good question. What does your resting face look like? Think about that. How inviting is your is your face are you are you walking to the mailbox with your cereal like oh, I'm go to the mailbox i gotta pay bills i don't want to pay the bills they're gonna come in the mailbox I don't know. or are you going to the mailbox all oh, like i hope my neighbors are seeing me out here so that when i make eye contact with them my neighbors are gonna see a happy a happy soul when you when you take a peek and you look at somebody that you pass on the street as you go by them. Do you smile at them or do you turn your head the other way? Because I can tell you this, one smile back to somebody else could be the, the change of their life. It could be the opportunity for you to enter their circle. You to, the, the seed that God wants to plant, the Holy Spirit that wants to plant a seed in that person starts possibly with just a smile that normally you would have a resting face for. So think about it. We control our resting face. We control our happiness. We control what we look like, right? We can choose to give somebody a smile because that's, that's, that's what we, we're, we're very lucky that way, right? Because we're not a robot. In Luke 6, 32 through 36, it says, we are to be merciful, just like our father is merciful. See, what we might just be is the person God has to, is the person that God has to witness and be the light in the pathway to heaven for someone. See, we, we don't get to decide this. It says it in there in Luke 6 that we don't get to decide. God, God is there. He places people in our lives for a reason. I was placed in Ted and Michelle's lives for a really big reason. 
And that is to learn how to love unconditionally because for a long time I thought I had to be something or be behave a certain way in order to be loved. And that is not true. Remember, Jesus always has time. If we get too busy, we could lose our sensitivity, right? If we're too busy, we might lose the sensitivity that's going on around us. The people that need us the most, we're going to breeze on by them because we got to get here, we got to get there. Because very well, we could be in the midst of somebody that's hurting. So just a simple love and a simple cheer somebody up could be life-changing. See, Jesus never missed an opportunity. He always stopped to help. We need to be more aware. Be aware. We need our heads on a, on a swivel, right? When you're walking through the wilderness, you're always got your head on a swivel because you don't know if there's going to be a bear that's coming out, right? You're always looking. So we need to be looking, right? I know our circle is sometimes really big or maybe our circle is really small. But we need to expand. We need to expand our hearts. Our Jesus love needs to grow. It needs to grow where we wouldn't expect it to grow. So maybe Ted needs to start going to Safeway. I don't know. But maybe he needs to shop somewhere else for a week. Granted, he can get in there. He knows where to go. But who else will he meet if he goes somewhere else? See, loving like Jesus is offering hope. It's offering hope that is free from our Savior. He is in the business to solve our problems. He is in the business to help us live the best life we can live and have the best future retirement ever. But we have to love like him and we have to love ourselves and we have to give to others. To understand God's love is how we are going to have the ultimate breakthrough. So let me tell you right now, if you want the ultimate great breakthrough, God looks at us with compassion and love. He always tells us it's okay. Always. Doesn't matter, folks. The heart of God towards you will give you the best life. 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Everything you do must be done in love. Darn it. Darn it. He just said, he just said it in the Bible. 1 Corinthians 16, 14. Everything we do, everything we must do in love. See, God paints the picture. When he says everything, he's talking about pretty much everything. You say, ooh, that's tough. That's really tough. Like I said, I can't, it's hard to love my neighbor. Well, guess what? Do you know your neighbor? That's a good question to ask yourself. Do you even know your neighbor's names? Guess what? I don't know my neighbor's names. So that's a problem, right? I had to do a little self-check on myself. I had to think about the fact that, what, how much witnessing am I doing in my own neighborhood? Am I loving my neighbors? Granted, I'll, I'll, I will tell you this, though. If I do see my neighbor and make eye contact, I smile. Because that's, that's generally what I do is I'm a very generally a smiley person. And I love, I love people. So I do smile. But because that's something I normally do, I need to do more. Okay? I need to step out of the basic smile at your neighbor. And maybe I need to walk up and introduce myself. Okay? Have a conversation. See, it's putting relationships before activities. See, jobs, sports, hobbies. See, we need to love as a priority. Okay, we need to put people's lives as a priority. Because life is about relationship. Okay, we, we, we have to have relationships. We can't be isolated in this world alone. Okay? It, it's not about our accomplishments. It's not about winning the medal like Pastor Mark said. Okay? It's not about getting that accomplishment. It's about the relationships that are involved in getting to that accomplishment. Right? 
Loving like God is taking care of people who can't take care of you. Can't give you anything back at that point. See, God is patient with you. God is kind to you. He loves you. He doesn't envy. He doesn't boast. God is not proud. Isn't that amazing? He's not proud at all. God doesn't dishonor others. He does not dishonor others. See, that goes back to loving your neighbor, right? He is not self-seeking. He is not easily angered with you. God keeps no records of wrongs. Oh, thank goodness, right? Who out there in this world keeps no records of wrongs? You know, hey, Dad, I broke your record player again. Sorry. Oh, oh, no problem. Hey, Dad, I broke your record player again. Sorry. Oh, no problem. Right? That's unheard of. See, the only reason why that could happen is because Jesus paid the ultimate price on the cross. Okay? He died for you. He died for your sins. So that when you do come back and say, I did it again. God, I did it again. God, I'm sorry. I did it again. He says, it's okay, child. It's okay. I love you. I love you no matter what. There's a lot of evil around us, right? Well, God loves us through all that. See, God's always going to protect you from that. God's always going to trust you. He trusts you with all of his heart. There, there's, no, there's no in between. There's no halfway. God always, always, always perseveres. And God never fails. See, God will never fail you. I promise. That is who God is. That's God's heart towards you. Isn't that amazing that a God so big and so amazing can love us through every imperfection that we have? And that's a lot of imperfections for some of us, right? And that's okay too, because we're not meant to be perfect, okay? It's everlasting time. That's what we call it, everlasting time. Why do I call it everlasting time? Because you can show yourself available. It's called time plus commitment, all right? Make time for somebody and then commit to them. Try it. I'm, I'm going to get up and text somebody in the morning, good morning, that I don't normally text in the morning, good morning. And then when they respond, good morning, I'm going to tell them to have a great day, right? Because who doesn't want to hear, have a great day? Or I love you. Have, I, I'm thinking about you today. It's awesome. It's, it's an amazing feeling. It's really ultimately about attention right? Attention we give to others and attention that the Lord gives to us. See, the Lord's very attentive to us, but are we giving the attention to others that he's giving to us to share? And that's the thing is the most important part of life is sharing, sharing God's love, right? I know we only have so much time. I know we're all really busy, but you will never regret investing in somebody. Because I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty confident if I had Ted stand right here and Michelle stand right here, they'll tell you right now that they would invest in me again. And they would invest in me again. Because I was willing to understand the unconditional love of the Lord and God and how he just, he, he just overflows in my soul. And that all started from a relationship that started seven years ago. A relationship that was filled with God only. Okay, there was no personal, personal, you know, there was nothing there that they were going to get out of it. Except for helping me overcome some really big things so that I can help others. And let me tell you, I can't tell you all the people that I've been talking with and helping through their stuff. Because it's, it's personal and private. But I have a lot. And it's awesome. It's awesome that I can love like Jesus loved me. And how I was taught how to love. Remember, it only takes one second to send a smile. So I want to encourage you, if you're a lonely and isolated and you're watching this today and you don't know what to do, you need a friend, reach out to us. Reach out to somebody you know. Tell them, hey, you started. Say hi. 
You start the high and they're going to respond to you. And if they don't respond to you, then find a new high because there's a million people in this world. You don't have to be isolated and you don't have to be lonely. All you have to do is willing, willing to step out of the isolation, willing to rise above being alone and, and, and let somebody love you. Okay. If you need love, let us love you because we're here to love you. That's why we have a new day church. Okay. We're here as a church to love and to seek and to help. So let me tell you, there's ways you can reach out to us. They're going to be posted up here on the board and, uh, you can reach out, you can email, text, whatever it is that you need to do. And then one of our people will reach out to you, but don't live alone. Okay. If you don't have Jesus in your heart, now's the time. Okay. We're doing a segment on heaven is for you. And let me tell you right now, this is a sermon that comes that heaven is for you because being able to love like Jesus is a pretty amazing thing. And when we get to heaven, it's going to be even more amazing. So if you don't have the savior in your heart to love like Jesus, now's the time. Okay. It's simple. You just ask him in, right? It, it is so incredibly amazing the way you can change the way you love by having Jesus in your heart. And if you do have Jesus in your heart and you're struggling with that, ask the Holy Spirit to guide you. Ask him to bring people into your lives. If you're someone who doesn't have friends and you want more friends, ask God to provide them for you. Because guess what? They'll start knocking. I promise. Because God has a list and he loves our help. He loves us to share what he has for others. So don't live alone, church. And that's all I got for today. And I want to encourage you tomorrow is Valentine's Day. You know what? I know it's a commercial holiday and I'm not saying go buy some flowers, but I am going to tell you this. It's your opportunity to tell somebody I love you one more time. Okay. And, and then after Valentine's Day is over that very next day, I want you to try to do it again. Okay. Tell somebody you love them more than once, once in a while. Tell them all the time. If you love somebody, share it because God loves us and he shares it with us every single day. All right, well, you have a great Sunday. This, this is a new day! day. <laughs> hey guys, it's the announcements. This is Ted. Uh, we want to start off by Tuesday. Tuesday is Bible study. I'm being picked on. And it's run by Melissa and Sandra. It is yeah. awesome. Wow. Take back your life. Tuesday nights at 7 o'clock. And if you want, if you're out of state or you're out of country even, if you want to join in, let them know as well because they'll put you on the video and you'll be part of the Bible study. You don't want to miss it, guys. So if, you have, if, you've already, if you've already not signed in, then sign in. Let the girls know. They want you there. Yeah. You bet. And Wednesday, oh my goodness, my Ooh. prayer. You yeah. do not want to miss this. Yeah. And bring your prayer requests. And let's see that praise yeah, page. Yeah. Just put it out of the park there. That's right. We got Sunday morning YouTube and the lovely, the incredible, the talented. Who who is? is uh, I thought it was oh, me. it's Michelle. Michelle. <laughs> yeah, of course it is. Because there's so many talented, beautiful. No, it is Michelle. She's gonna yes. rock it. She Woo! always does. Brings the word of God solid. Yes. And uh, come on, get the word out. Would you share? Would you share? Would you just share? Get yes, that word yes. out. Make oh, Jesus, Jesus famous. famous. Amen. And uh, it is double header Sunday, the yeah. week after the Super Bowl, February 20th. We are having in person church mm -hmm. at Creekside at 6 p.m. And yeah. the tall, oh, I was going to say dark. The tall uh, Dutch uh, yes. Pastor Mark is going to be, nice. nice. be teaching on uh, Sunday night and nice. bringing God's word. And we're so excited uh, to hear his message uh, Sunday night. Maybe he'll wear his cowboy, cowboy. hat. Yes. Wow, wow. Maybe Woo. it's a cowboy boots, too. Yeah, yeah I hear yeah. there might be Woo. cowboy prayer coming up soon. Oh, so man. stay tuned for that. Come on. Uh, Join us. Love you all. We love you guys. Hey. See ya. See ya.